Welcome to the home of the Cynthia Sears Artist Books Collection. Activities of daily life, changes in the weather and seasons are often reflected in letters and diaries. These notes become documents of the mundane. Deborah Greenwood's The Land and Amy Lee's One Rhododendron Bush in May 2020 capture this. After studying art at Columbia College for Art and Design, Greenwood went on to earn a PhD in mythology and in-depth psychology, and now lives and works as an artist in Tacoma, Washington. Her education has helped her think about creativity and how it is expressed, something she's very curious about. Greenwood's book, titled The Land, is a collage of postcards from the early 1900s that thematically explore our relationship to land. It is housed in this wrapper, compactly folded in this unusual cone shape. Greenwood creates collages from ordinary materials, like these postcards. In the colophon of the land, Greenwood has shared the messages from three of the postcards. One reads, Dear Sister, All done with grain, little rain, Done the thrashing, turn over poor, 1913. The messages record the largely ordinary lives of everyday farmers and other land laborers. Greenwood has cut these postcards into small green, gold, cream, and white shapes. She then reassembled them into an intricate spiral pattern. When you completely open the book, it swoops around as if creating and becoming the land it represents in a sweep of magical motion. Greenwood intends this world to be a yin-yang symbol. The green and gold of earth is balanced with the blue sky of heaven, but with added fragments of written words to express our mental side. In the making, Greenwood spent much time thinking about our disconnect, the disappearance of small family farms, the paving of fields to build shopping malls, and the denial of climate change. The pieces are held together on the back with strips from farmer's journals and old almanacs. The Land is a unique book recycling old postcards into new form. The messages and caring for the land are still there, but our fragmentation and disconnect are evident. For nearly all of us, the routine of our daily lives changed in March of 2020 with the COVID-19 virus sweeping the world. Many artists, myself included, could not engage our creative practice the way we did before the pandemic. Our big pictures shrunk to smaller, more manageable bites. If we made anything at all, we strove to make something we could accomplish in a day, a week, or maybe a month, because who knew what lay ahead? Amy Lee is well known and respected in the international book arts community and beyond as a leading Hanji researcher and practitioner in North America. Hanji is the Korean word for paper. Lee's handmade Hanji is the beginning point for her many creative works, which include artist books, sculptures, and installations. Amy told me that she lives with her paper and waits until the paper has a really good idea for the next step. She's learned to trust her hands and the paper that she's made with them. The idea this paper gave Lee in the early months of the pandemic led to One Rhododendron Bush in May 2020. Lee's blog is called It's My Party, and on March 24, 2020, she wrote, the best therapy has been to draw my front yard rhododendron from the window. In her blog photo, you can see a small rhododendron, barely tall enough to view from the window. On April 2nd and April 24th, she posts a photo of the paintings of her rhododendron on her handmade paper. By May, Lee is posting the piles of drawings and paintings that have proliferated around her. She said, the daily practice of drawing that roadie truly kept me sane. 
One of the unique features of one rhododendron bush in May 2020 is the single sheet binding. Lee has extensively explored single sheet bindings, and this one comes from Woven and Interlocking Book Structures by Claire Van Vliet and Elizabeth Steiner. Single sheet bindings allow Lee the freedom to play and explore ideas on her paper. Later, she can decide how to collate and bind them together. For this book, Lee used paper she made from two kinds of milkweed for the covers and straps. The paper she used for the pages she made while in Australia from a plant called Harakaki. This rhododendron gave Lee a focus intellectually and creatively. We can see care and admiration in these paintings she made. Day by day, she takes us with her. Monday, she is trying to find the right green to paint the leaves. Wednesday, she writes how well her lines to delineate the leaves are working. Saturday, she paints the view from above. Sunday, she tells us the greens are still off. Lee's observations are incremental, but steady. From one Monday to the next Monday, Lee suggests the weeks run on into each other and time is hard to track. Another charming element to the book is the last painted image, which is not a rhododendron at all. Lee has found her way to the grass, a dandelion, and an oak leaf. Not even, it's a maple, she writes with multiple exclamation points. And then, no, now I think it's an oak leaf again. One rhododendron bush in May 2020 has captured for me an essential part of the pandemic. The sameness of the days and the anxiety that was somewhat managed through engagement with nature and creativity. Both the land and one rhododendron bush in May 2020 are made from a summation of ordinary days and ordinary materials, but the results are two extraordinary one-of-a-kind artist books.